Hi and welcome to an introduction to Calvadox. My name is Jeremy and today I'm going to be giving you a brief overview of the Calvadox platform, demonstrating the simple process of building a form, publishing it to users and then collecting that data. The main areas that we're going to be covering today is the portal. This is really for your administrators and your back office users to be able to configure forms, manage lists and run reports on all of that data that gets returned from the users amongst much more. On the right hand side here, we have our easy to use mobile app that's available on both iOS and Android. And as you can see, we follow a very simple top down approach with the mobile device. That means it's very simple for your users to use, collect the data that they need to. And we pride ourselves on being able to roll this application out in most cases without any user training, which means it's very easy for users to jump in and just start using the application. And then lastly, we'll be talking about our web forms. This is really a method of being able to share forms from the mobile app. If let's say you needed an e-signature from a user that wasn't on the app, or you needed to send a secure link out to let's say a customer or supplier to be able to collect information and return it to the Calvadoc system. What we'll do is we'll jump straight into portal to start with, show you some of those features, how it works, and then we'll come back to the application shortly to see how they work. So moving into the portal, this is our standard dashboard you'll see when you first log into your account. It's really designed to give you a nice overview of your account, what's going on, and the current state of play. As we can see along the top of the dashboard, we can see active forms, our users and SIM cards that might be assigned to the account, through to different states of submissions. So if we've got a request that we've sent out to the user that we're waiting to come back in, we'll see that on here. Drafts that users have saved on their devices but haven't yet sent in to be processed, and any forms that have been completed and received and processed by the server. We've also got a section of graphs, which is going to show you record activity and the active hours and also an activity map. So a heat map based on where records are being submitted if you've enabled GPS tracking on those forms. And on the right hand side, we've got our latest submissions, which is giving you a nice overview of the last or the most recent records that have been submitted. And what we'll also see throughout the system as we're working through, especially with the reports, when we go through, wherever you see this magnifying glass, we can click on that, and that will then open up the detail for that particular form that's been submitted, and you can view all of the data in there. So what we'll do is we'll move over to the forms now and start having a look at building our first form and show you how simple that is to get started. All we need to do over here is select forms on the left hand side and this will give us a list of all of our forms that we have on the account. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new form and then we'll call it contact information. So this is a form that we're going to be requesting some contact information from the user. They'll populate that on the device and then we'll send that in and we'll build a workflow to send the data through to let's say our head office department. Now, before we get started, I just wanted to familiarize ourselves with a form builder and how we've designed it to be as simple as possible to build your forms. As you'll see here, we've broke it down into three separate columns. On the left-hand side is your add field, and that contains all of the different field choices that we have for our forms. We'll come back to those in a second when we start building our form. Our form layout is what we call our staging area in the middle. Now, this is where we're going to be dragging and dropping our fields into to start building that in a very simple top-down approach. And on the right-hand side is our general settings, web form settings, and advanced settings. This is where we can really configure the form to work for us in terms of how we want it to function and the types of options that we want the users to have. For example, one of the options here is GPS tracking. If we wanted to enable that, we can just select yes on the right hand side here. Now any new submission will be automatically GPS tracked as the users send their data in. And as you can see, there's a lot of different options in terms of all of these menus. However, you'll see that there's a blue exclamation mark against each of these. It will explain exactly what this does for you. So it's very easy to jump in and understand exactly what all of these options are doing. But for now, let's start building the form. So the example that we're working with today is contact information. So in this form, we're going to want to add fields such as the title, their name, address, maybe telephone number, date of birth, and we'll probably want to get some consent from them as well in terms of you know, agreeing to the storage of their personal information and you know, in terms of your privacy policy and so on. 
So let's start with adding some of these fields in. Now, as you can see, each of these fields have been structured in a group. So we have layout types, which allows us to build or structure the form or provide text wording within the document. Basic answers, which are the likes of short answers, long answers, numbers, dates and times, choice fields, media options for photos, signatures, and then we have the advanced options for repeaters and calculations that we'll probably touch on, touch on shortly. So let's get started with trying to add some information. So let's say that we want to add their full name in. So let's start by dragging the short answer in, and you'll see that we get this pop up. This is our edit box for this field. So we can see this is a short answer, so we know it's a single line. So let's start with giving it a caption. The caption is what the field's going to be referred to on the app. So let's call this full name. Now, if we run down these options, we don't need to worry about all of them too much, but one option here is capitalized words. That means the system will automatically uppercase the first letter of every word that comes through on that field. So it just keeps your data nice and tidy when users are submitting them in case they don't forget to uppercase the, the first letter of the surname, let's say. What we can also do here is set this to a required field. That will ensure that the user has to provide it. The app won't allow the form to be submitted without providing that information. And then what we'll do is we'll come down and select save field. Now let's say we want to add an address. So an address is going to be very similar. We just want them to be able to free text that uh, the data in. But so we'll use a long answer. That just allows us to add multiple lines within that box. So let's call this address. And again, we'll set that to required and we'll save that field. Now let's say that we've uh, we need to add a title. So we should have captured that earlier. As you've seen me do, I can just pick these fields up and drop them in. We've also got a choice if I wanted to, let's say, use a selection. You can see here that the system will allow you to drag and drop fields into any position. If I go through, select selection, drop that at the top, we can now come in and select title. Now, a select field has a lot of functionality that we won't be covering off today, but some of the key features are being able to either select from a list of options that we can free type, or we can select from a list that we've already set up in the system. In this case, what we'll do is we'll add Mrs, Mr, Miss, and other. Now, all we're going to do again, very similar to the other fields, we're going to set that to required because we do want to receive the, uh, the title from them. And then we can come through and select save field. So now we've got a title in there as well. So let's just quickly add a couple more. Let's say we want to capture a telephone number. So let's start with a number. I'm going to drag that through and telephone number. We're not going to make that required. That's fine. We're really only after their email address, let's say. So let's save that there. We won't make that required. And as you can see, we don't have a little asterisk there. And we're going to just add here an email address in. That one we will make required. And the answer type I'm going to set to email. All that's going to do on the app is just make sure that the keyboard configuration is right. So it makes it life a little bit easier for the users as they'll have the at symbol available as they're entering that data. So that's our email address, We've got a telephone number. Let's pop a date of birth in. So we'll use our date and time column for that. Date and time allows us to select either a date, a time or a date and time together, depending on the type of information you're wanting to capture and how precise that is. In this case, because it's date of birth, we're just worried about the date. So let's call this date of birth and we'll save that. Again, we're not going to set the date of birth field to be mandatory. We're not enforcing that data to be provided, but if they're happy to, that would be great. So that's our key bits of information now that we want to pop in there. Let's look at consent. So we'll probably want to put a little bit of a break in the form, i.e. just separate those fields. And we'll use a heading for that. So a heading gives us a, a heading for a group, let's say a group of fields. So we're going to call this consent. We'll leave that left aligned as all of the other fields are as well. And then we'll add a caption. Now a caption, as I mentioned earlier, is a field that we can provide text. This is typically used if you're guiding the user that's entering the data into the form, or it could be used for things like contracts of employment that are quite popular in Colvadocs, where you can add all of your um, wording into that. The user can review the, the contract on the app, complete their information, and then send that off. And we can then put that into a document for you. But in this case, we're just going to put some simple, it's going to be a very basic GPR 
consent. Uh, let's just say by giving uh, consent, you agree to the storage of your personal information. I'm sure you'll have something a little bit better to pop in there than that, but that will do for now. And then lastly, what we'll do is we'll use a choice field, which is a simple selection field. So unlike the selection that we had earlier, which is going to be a drop down with a list of options, a choice gives us an inline option. So we can have up to five different choices. And rather than clicking down into a selection and a list, we just show them all on one line. So it's very simple to click through. And that's very important for long forms where you've, you're asking a lot of yes, no questions. Um, these fields are very powerful because the user can just run down and select yes or no, just very similar to a tick box. So in this case, what we'll call this is, do you give consent? And we'll leave the choices as no and yes. Now we're going to say is required because again, we need to make sure they do provide that information. I'll say yes. And now lastly, if they've said yes, we probably want to capture a signature in this case. So let's come down and add a signature in. Let's call this signed. However, in the case where the user hasn't given consent, we probably don't want to show that. So let's come in and say, only show this signed box where do you give consent is yes. And what we'll also do on top of that is say, when this field is shown, we need it, it is required. So if they say they give consent, they have to sign it. Now, I think that's the bulk of everything that we needed on this form for now. We're capturing their title, their name, and so on. We might want to add some additional fields, such as maybe taking a photo of their business card, if they have one, uh, through to maybe adding a repeater so we can capture more than one telephone number if, uh, if we want to do that. But let's get started with jumping into the app and showing you how that looks now. So the last thing that we need to do is to publish these changes. So what this publish does is when we click this button, it will push that update out to all of the devices. So this means we can work on these changes. Once we're ready, we can press the button and any devices that are online will receive the form in real time. Otherwise, if they're offline at the, that point, as soon as they've loaded the app, they'll receive those updates, the device will sync, and it's back online. So what I'll do is I'll come up here, click Publish Changes, and as soon as that disappears, that means that all those changes have been pushed out to the device, and we're good to go. So if I go over here and we load up our mobile device, as you can see, this is the app now running on an Android phone. So as I mentioned earlier, we've made this app as simple as possible to use. And then with that said, there isn't one configuration option within the app. All of that's done within the administration portal. In this case, all I'm looking to do here is come down, click on new form and select the form to get started. So as a user from this view, click on new form, contact information is the form that we've created. And when I select that, that's now going to load up that form. If I go through, I'm going to go through and actually fill this out as, I, as myself. So I'll select the title from that drop down. I'll pop my details in here. Let's pop our address in. Pop a telephone number in. And we'll pop an email address in as well. Fantastic. Now date of birth is optional, so we don't need to pop that in. But as we said, do you give consent is a mandatory field. And as we configured earlier, when we select yes, that should then pop up with a signature box to allow us to sign that uh, on our phone. So when we go through, select yes, you can see that that conditional logic kicks in or we'll then show that field. When I click into that, I can now sign that with my finger and press the tick and we're good to go. So now before I send that data in, we haven't actually told the system what we want to do with it yet. So we've got the fields, we've got all of the configuration. So now we need to configure our workflow. If we go back into our back into the portal and we select a workflow, we can now go through and create a new workflow. And what a workflow is, is essentially saying, when a, when a form has been received, what do you want to do with it? And there's a whole host of options that we can do. Anything from creating reports and sending them out via emails to integrating with third party systems, or if you've already got a CRM that you wanted to send this data into, we can likely integrate through various means through to let's say list management where you can have multiple devices all working 
off one, let's call it Excel spreadsheet. There's various uses and use cases with Colvidocs that the workflow allows us to configure that process behind the scenes to do absolutely anything you want to do, including things like exception reporting through conditions that you can say based on form input and depending on the answers that have been provided, you might want to trigger different responses. For example, if they have provided a certain bit of information or some information is missing, you could escalate it to another department to review and deal with thereafter, depending on the use case and the, the data that you're submitting through the form. In this case, we're going to keep things nice and simple. I'm just going to ask the system to generate a report for me and send it to me via email. So let's start with giving this a name. So we're just going to call it send report. We're going to pop down to our create report section select generated report we'll leave the standard report file name that's not a problem and we'll ask the system to pdf that up for us and then we can move down to our send email section now this is going to allow us to either send an email to a list of configured users within the system to any email address provided within the form itself or in this case we're just going to specify manual entry and we're going to enter my details. So I'll pop my details in here and pop that in as such. Then we'll click the plus and we're good to go. Now, as you can see, our email subject and email body are here. And you've probably noticed already these square brackets. These are placeholders that refer to either form data or contents within that form. So in this case, the email subject is going to be new form form name is in square brackets so that's going to be pointing at the form name that we have set up and what i might want to do is add to that so if i want to add the user's name to this all i need to do is come in here add four and then as i open my square brackets you'll see that we have a drop down with all of the different fields in within the form that we can then pull through so i can say right email subject is going to be new form for full name and now when I receive these and I've got a big long list of emails in my inbox, I can easily identify the file that I'm looking for based on the subject. So in this case, I'm just going to leave those email subjects like that now. Let's leave the email body as standard. We don't need to play around with that too much at the moment. And then all we're going to do is ask the system to attach that report that we've generated to that email as well. So then if we come through, save the workflow, we're now ready to go. So all we need to do now is just pop back to our app. This is all of the data that we've provided earlier, and we're just going to click send. Now, as soon as we've done that, you can see here that the system receives it, it uploads processes, and as soon as that's been ticked, that means everything's been processed. So the server's received it, it's generated the email, emailed it out, everything is done in real time. Now, all we have to do is open up that email that was sent out, and we can easily see now the subject has been set up correctly with my name in there. This is my example data that's come through from the body. And if we open up our PDF, this is going to contain all of the information that was provided in the form. So in this case, it is a generated or a basic layout. The system will generate it based on all of the data that's submitted in the form. But there are options as well of providing your own Word document uh, and templates and so on that you may want the system to use an email out either through Word documents or PDFs, but we'll cover that in another video. But for the time being, that's the form completed. We've now got that email through to us from the users and anyone providing that form, the information will get sent through to us in real time. Now, going back to our portal, Although we've covered off the basics in terms of fill, building a form, we may need to go back in here and make some changes. If we come back into our form builder, as you saw earlier with our edit options, we can actually click on any of these fields and change them around, do whatever we like. So in this case, if we wanted to make date of birth required, we can easily click on date of birth, select yes, and save field. And you'll see that that publish changes has automatically appeared because this change is ready to push out to the device. We can also easily change the, the layout or the format of these fields. We can pick them up from this little handle here and move them up and down through the form wherever you wanted them to drop in. And again, if we come through, click publish changes, as soon as that's disappeared, that's ready to go. And we can now see that on our device. If we come back in, select our contract information, date of birth has now been moved up and it's set to mandatory as well. 
So that should give you a good overview of the functionality and the flexibility of the forms, how you can configure them to do as you wish. There's a lot more to cover off here in terms of the different features and workflows and so on. And we'll cover all of that in various videos moving forward. But the last thing we said we'd look at was our web forms. So let's say we want to part fill this form and send it out to someone else via email to get them to sign it remotely. Govodox has that feature as standard that you can fill out a form, email it to an email address and have someone outside of Govodox complete that form, sign it or provide photos and so on and send that data back to you as a user to check and then submit. The setup's very straightforward. Once you've got your form set up, in this case, we're going to go into our web form settings, enable share via email and then publish those changes. What you'll now see next time we load up that form is we'll have a shared button showing in the top right hand corner. The way that web forms work is any information that you provide on the form isn't editable by the user that receives it, so it's secure, it's safe, but they can fill out any information that hasn't been provided. So for example, if here I want to fill out my details again, so as a user, I'm going to send this out to Joe Bloggs, pop the address in, and let's pop Joe's date of birth in. So let's select Sixteenth of December, ninety-nine. Now we'll pop an email address in there because we've got Joe's email. I'm going to use mine for the purposes of the demo. So I'm going to leave the telephone number blank and the consent field blank. Now all I need to do is click share via email, enter the email address here, and then we can send that to the user. Now what we'll see as soon as we've done and we've sent this, the entry has been updated to sent to the email address. Now all we need to do as a user is open up the email that we've received. Now from the user side, as per the email earlier, this would be branded with your company details. When they click on the open form button, they will be directed to the web form, which is a view of that data through a website. So this can be completed on a mobile phone, a tablet, on a PC. It is very much mobile compatible to mirror the simplicity of the mobile application. But on here, We've got some basic GDPR wording that is configurable, it can be changed. When they go through and click start now, we'll see the form that's been sent from the user, contains all of the information here for Joe Blogs, and we can see that the telephone number and the consent fields are both editable because they haven't been provided. So I will, I've got my telephone number, so I'm going to pop that in here, and then I'll go down and give consent. So exactly as the mobile app works, so once these fields have been set, the visibility rules kick in and we can now see our signs field. I can go through, sign this with my hand or my mouse, and then we're done. As soon as we click send, that's going to send that back to the device and the user can then review that. So as a user, I've now completed that. I'm going to click send and we'll be taken to a thank you page as soon as that's been processed. And that now means it's back with the user. So when we return to the app, we can now see that this form has been updated to returned from the email address that was sent to. And we can see all of the new information being the telephone number and the e-signature that's been provided. Now all we do is click send and that will send that up to the server and process just as if we entered all of that information on the form directly. We have allowed it to send to a user, allow them to sign it and then send it back to you from there. Now, the last thing that we might want to do before we finish off today is just have a look at our reporting. So at any point, if you needed to go back and look at that information or any forms that were submitted by users, you can visit the report section. And this is going to give you a list of all of the forms that have been provided on that day as default. It will always default to today's date, but you can change the forms that you want to look at, the users that have submitted the data in any statuses, and you can even filter on date ranges. So if you're looking for any forms within the last seven days or even within a custom date period as well, you can select that from the picker here and click search. As you saw earlier, all of these forms have the magnifying glass. So I can always go in, have a look at them, view all of the data that was submitted in a raw format, including a full audit log of exactly when each of the actions happened. And if I wanted to, I can always click back in at any point and reprocess the record that will then send that email out 
I hope that's given you a good overview of the functionality in Colvadox. As I mentioned, there's a lot more in terms of field configurations, workflows, what we can do around lists that we haven't touched on today, and also custom dashboards and way that we can visualize it in various forms through dashboards or graphs and so on, which is something that we tend to work with you around to fully understand how your business works and tailor it around you and your business processes. If there's anything else you'd like to see, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to set up a tailored demo for you and run you through the system in far more detail than we have done today. But hopefully, as I said, that's given you a good overview of what the system is capable of, how far we can extend it and how flexible it can be to work for you. If you have any questions at all, let me know. Otherwise, thank you for your time. Have a great day.